Do you know how all of your pool plumbing works? Knowing how the water flows through your system and how each valve and pipe operates is critical for proper pool care. And understanding each component will let you troubleshoot issues like clogged lines and air leaks before you waste time and money hiring a professional. So here's a step-by-step -step walkthrough of your pool's anatomy. Let's dive in. Real quick, if you want more help taking care of your pool, be sure to grab our free pool care cheat sheet at swimuniversity.com slash cheat sheet. It's totally free and will help keep your pool water clean and clear throughout the year. First, there are three main sections of your pool's plumbing, the suction side, the filtration side, and the pressure side. No matter what kind of pool you have, this flow of water is the same. Number one, the suction side. This takes in water from your pool and introduces it to your filtration system. Your pool pump sucks the water through the skimmer, which is the rectangular port in your pool wall. If you have an in-ground pool, it also pulls water through the main drains. Number two, the filtration system. This section includes your pump and filter. Once the water is sucked in from the pool, it passes through the pump and into the filter. The filter then cleans the water by removing debris and contaminants. And if you have a smaller above ground pool, your pump and filter might be the same piece of equipment. Number three, the pressure side. This side of your pool pushes water from the filtration system back into your pool. After the water is filtered, it enters back into your pool through the return jets. You might have additional equipment after your filter, like a heater or automatic chlorinator. Now, let's walk through each component in this flow. Number one, the skimmers. This is the first line of defense for filtering out debris. Whether you have one or multiple skimmers, each skimmer port contains a skimmer basket that catches larger debris like leaves and twigs. For the water to flow properly, your pool's water level needs to be at least halfway up the skimmer. Your skimmer has the following elements. A skimmer weir. This moving door opens and closes to regulate the amount of water entering the skimmer. When you turn off the pump, the weir closes so that debris collected in the skimmer basket doesn't float back into the pool. You don't necessarily need a weir, but it's helpful to install one if you have debris issues. A skimmer basket. This is where debris collects before entering your pump. It should be checked and emptied once a week. Holes in the skimmer well. When you remove your skimmer basket, you should see one or two holes. If you have two holes at the bottom of your skimmer well, the hole furthest from the pool wall leads directly to the pump. The hole closest to the pool wall pulls water in from the main drain. A skimmer diverter, float valve, or equalizer. For in-ground pools, this helps divert suction away from the skimmer to the main drain if your water level gets too low or your skimmer is clogged. It also helps regulate how much suction normally comes in from your main drain. Number two, the main drain. If you have an in-ground pool, you'll have at least one main drain. Like the skimmers, it pulls water in from the pool and into the pump. Newer in-ground pools have two main drains to reduce suction force in case something blocks one of the drains. Number three, the suction lines and valves. Once the water passes through your skimmer or main drains, the suction side pipes, usually made of PVC, carry the water to your filtration system. This is also where you'll see one or more valves that control water flowing into the pump and filter. You might use these valves to temporarily stop the flow of water if you need to work on your filter system. It's a good idea to test these valves if you're not sure how they function, then label them for future reference. Depending on your system, the only valves you might see are shutoff valves. These valves shut off the water supply to your filter system. Generally, you'll see these valves at the front of your pump, but they could be located in other areas or you might have a multi-directional valve or a three-way valve. They change the flow of water from one pipe to another or split the flow to two pipes. Usually this valve controls the flow from the skimmers and the main drain lines. Generally, you'll see these valves on both the suction side and pressure side of your filter system. This is also a helpful valve for testing your skimmer lines for clogs. Be sure to check out our other video about unclogging blocked pipes. Number four, the pump. Your pool's pump contains an impeller which spins fast enough to create a vacuum. That vacuum is what pulls water in from the pool, through your skimmers and the main drains, and into your filtration system. As water passes through the pump, the force changes from pulling to pushing, and the pump pushes water into the filter. Water should be moving through your pump whenever it's running, otherwise it can run dry and burn out. Here are the main components of your pool pump. The pump lid. This is usually transparent so you can watch the pump function without taking the lid off. Always turn off your system before removing the lid. The strainer housing and basket. This is where the pool water first enters the pump. The basket inside the housing collects the debris and should be emptied regularly. The drain plug. This is used to drain the pump during winterization. You may have more than one drain plug. The pump housing with impeller. 
This is the main control center where the impeller, diffuser, and seals live. As the impeller spins, it creates a vacuum that pulls water from your pool and towards your filter. The pump motor and shaft. This spins the impeller. If your pump is pulling in air or running dry, be sure to check out our pump troubleshooting video. Number five, the filter. After the water leaves the pump, it enters your filter. There are three types of filters, sand, DE or diatomaceous earth, and cartridge filters. Each filter either has a multi-port valve or push-pull valve. Multi-port valves allow you to direct the flow of water either through the filter or to bypass the filter altogether. If you want a step-by-step -step walkthrough of each multi-port valve setting, be sure to check out our other video. Push-pull valves are commonly found on DE filters and only have two positions, filter and backwash. These settings either send water through the filter and back into the pool or out of the filter through the waste port and backwash hose. Number six, return lines. These pipes, usually made of PVC, carry pool water from the filter to the return jets. You might also have shutoff or three-way valves in this section too. Number seven, the return jets. Once the water has passed through the return lines, it arrives at the return jet where it re-enters the pool. In addition to sending water back into the pool, the return jet also helps to circulate water. This helps direct dirty water and debris towards the skimmers and back into your filter system. Finally, you might have one or two additional pieces of equipment in your plumbing, like a pool heater or an automatic sanitizer. Pool heaters are installed after your filter. There are several types of pool heaters, including natural gas, electric, heat pumps, and solar. Automatic sanitizers like chlorinators, chemical feeders, and saltwater systems are the last piece of equipment in your filtration line. These systems automatically sanitize your water right before it returns to your pool. Just don't sanitize your water before your heater, since water with high chlorine or bromine levels can damage your heater over time. And that's it. And if you need more help, grab our free pool care cheat sheet at swimuniversity.com slash cheat sheet. And if you found this video helpful, subscribe for more pool care tutorials throughout the year. That's it. Thanks again and happy swimming.